Hey, Hickok here, Hickok 45, back in the woods. We're way back out, out here uh, beyond the shooting range on the lower 40, almost the upper 40. Uh, gonna do a vlog and uh, kind of update you on a few things. I love these opportunities to just chat with you because I can't do that. All I can do is answer comments, answer questions sometimes, and uh, this is great because I can actually talk to you. Uh, I know my subscribers, uh, I have uh, questions uh, daily almost, and uh, sometimes I find myself just wishing I could uh, do a blanket email to everybody. So we're out here at the rock quarry. This was an old rock quarry. Uh, I don't know how old it is, 100 years old maybe, maybe longer, maybe 200 years ago. I don't know. When uh, they were over here quarrying rocks, somebody was, and uh, sawing them up with something at, at various points. But it's been a long time uh, since that's ever uh, gone on. And uh, beautiful time of the year, of course. Got our trusty dog, Ginger, with us. She uh, likes to come with us whenever we come out in the woods hiking. This is a popular area for us. My son and I used to come over here and carve. We'd get a stick and carve when he was four or five years old, actually playing with a knife. Ooh, how horrible, right? Uh, letting a five-year-old carve on a stick with a sharp knife. But one of the things I wanted to do was uh, get different location and this is a very popular spot for us a uh, uh, favorite spot actually particularly this time of the year and just talk about a couple of things but you know it's hard to go for more than a minute without uh, you know what all right World War I, 1911. Nice piece of iron. But anyway, it is difficult to go for very long without shooting. So you'll excuse me, uh, you understand. If you've ever been addicted to anything like coffee, maybe cigarettes, uh, you know what, it's, what it is like. So a couple of things I wanted to talk about. Uh, one of them is exactly that. You know, if you just stum stumble in on uh, my videos, my channel, and you're not a shooter, Maybe you uh, search for uh, how to make pumpkin pie, and lo and behold, there's a guy holding a big ugly guy holding a double barrel shotgun about ready to shoot a giant pumpkin with sunglasses. Uh, by the way, if you haven't seen that video, you need to see it. Uh, you know, you're just going to think, what in the world is this? You know, I was looking for pumpkin pie recipes. Or if uh, you were studying poetry and you did a search on Edgar Allan Poe, you found some idiot sitting on his porch swing and he blew a blackbird or raven you know out of a tree so uh point there is if you're not a shooter you just don't get it i guess it's like i'm not a golfer and so i don't understand that addiction or that that in, the enthusiasm that some people pursue that sport you know with but uh, you almost have to be a shooter to understand uh people like like me and all the other uh shooting videos you uh you just have to be a shooter if you're not a shooter you don't have any kind of interest in firearms i know you don't get it just it's okay though it's okay just understand it's uh it's like any other endeavor any other hobby uh, but it helps to be a shooter to see and enjoy the silly things that go on on my channel and all of it's not silly but uh seems like we come up with some silly ideas occasionally don't we uh for example the how not to hunt videos and and the other uh, uh foolish more foolish videos a couple of points i wanted to make about those uh just wanted to make sure because i have had a couple of questions from uh from hunters i i think probably uh, those videos on the How Not to Hunt series are in no way making fun of hunters. Uh, surely you know that. But just wanted to point that out. Uh, I don't really hunt. I hunt steel animals, but I have nothing against hunting. Uh, I used to hunt back in the early 70s, and uh, I'm just too lazy, just like I don't change my own oil. I let somebody else pack my meat for me before I uh, go buy it at the, at the uh, Kroger or the uh, corner market or whatever and then just buy it prepared. But uh, not, no intention to pick on hunters at all, uh, and we'll probably be having some more fun w with those sorts of things. Uh, and and on, on that same subject, on some of those silly videos where we're shooting at uh, you know, an owl in a tree or shooting at uh, a pumpkin or anything, maybe you don't want to try this at home. You know, just a little disclaimer here. Uh, we do some things uh, under safe circumstances, very, very carefully thought out, so we're never shooting in an unsafe direction. And if you just kind of bop into the channel and see some of that, you might wonder sometimes. But again, as I think I pointed out in my last vlog, uh, all that's taken into consideration. So uh, try to operate very safely. Uh, 
shooting at steel even and, and doing some of the things we do, uh, we do that with, uh, with great deliberation and it's well thought out. So you all be careful. If you're a young person and you are just getting into firearms, you don't want to necessarily uh, you know, emulate some of the things that you see on my channel. So you need to have the proper place to do that. And uh, if you're really young, uh, lots of supervision probably. Another thing I wanted to point out we do that some of you are aware of, I've seen some comments, and that is uh, that I'm trying to, to take still shots of, of all the various things we do so that uh, if you go to the photo bucket link on my channel, I have it on the, the first page under the About Me or you know there on the, the, the main channel page, the link. So, and I'll try to remember to put it on some of the actual videos too in the description on the information uh, you know, window. Uh, I'm going to try to put uh, still shots of just about every video we do. Uh, I know in the pumpkin video and the raven and the owl and all those and then some of that we have taken uh, six months ago maybe of uh, various spots on the range even. So, so remember to click on the, the photo bucket because I have a shooting album there and most of those stills are from you know, various videos that we've done, maybe just the process of, of how we, we even went about it. So we'll try to do a better job of taking more still shots in fact on, on those. Uh, one question I'm, I get quite, quite often, as you might imagine, and that is on the long range shooting. Uh, and I've answered this you know, in, in typing lots of times to a lot of different individuals, but I continue to get the question. And that is, on the long range shooting the pistols at 230 yards, how high am I holding? Well, I'm holding above the target, of course, but what I'm actually doing, and I have a little prop here brought out, you know, the cameraman to zoom in on it there. Uh, okay. This is supposed to be, this is kind of <laughs> a poor man's replica of a sight here. If you look at the sight, you know, that's the rear sight, the red being the front sight. Well, normally when you're shooting, especially a Glock, uh, most Glocks I've ever had, almost all of them, they shoot right at point of aim. Now, point of aim means the front sight is leveled up with the rear sight. So that's the kind of sight picture you got. Again, the red sight being the front sight, this black outline being the rear sight. Not that Glocks have red sights, right? But uh, that's all I had handy at the time. So you get a look that's kind of like that, right? You're, you're trying to level up your rear sight with your, your front sight. If you're a really new shooter, maybe you don't even know that, but that's generally what you're trying to do. Level those up, and then you set the target, like if you're trying to shoot at the end of my finger, you know, you want to set the target right right above that or just right on it. Okay, so you're leveling up the front sight, filling up the gap. We Most of us know that. Well, rather than just keep it, keep that sight picture, when I go out to 230 yards, rather than maintain that sight picture and just hold it up, you know, I don't do that. What I do is, because these sights are non-adjustable on Glocks, you know, generally. So what I do is, I end up raising the front sight up to about, let me see if I can stick it in there, so I'll show you about what my sight picture is. I think with any of the Glocks that I uh, attempt to hit something that far away, it's at least halfway up. I, I know I, on the Glock 30, I think I almost have to hold around the bottom of the front sight. But so what I do is I get a sight picture that ends up looking kind of like that. Uh, so I am actually focusing the rear sight, aligning the rear sight with the front sight somewhere in that area, maybe about halfway. And then I'm still putting the top of the front sight right where I want on the target. So I'm seeing the target, I'm seeing the gong. The gong or the top of this front sight, this red sight is in the middle of the gong. Just like it would be if it were 20 yards, the top of my front sight you know, would be say in the middle of the eight inch plate. All right, so I'm, I'm really trying to maintain the same sight picture in other words with the front sight. It's the rear sight that I'm moving. Uh, if you will, I'm just moving the rear sight down, more or less. And then I'm trying to keep it right in the middle or wherever it needs to be. You know, I take a few shots to try to get a feel for where I need to hold that rear sight. It might be, as I said, with the Glock 30, I have to have it more like that, where I'm holding right at the base of the front sight and then putting the front sight right on the target. It just depends on the gun. On the uh, Glock 23, I believe I was holding about in the middle, about like that. So, so that's what I'm looking at, and again, I'm seeing the target. I'm not shooting above the target at that wall somewhere, 
uh, you know, trying to index on a particular board or anything like that. I'm just looking right at the target. So the, the variable, the weird thing I'm doing is holding the rear sight downward. Okay, kind of like Elmer Keith used to do. Now on the Smith and Wesson, uh, that sight's adjustable. And so I did actually, and I do, if I'm shooting at that kind of range, I actually uh, lower the rear sight or raise the rear sight. And, and then I'm actually maintaining the same sight picture at that distance, okay, except that the rear sight is, is raised up. All right, so I'm just moving the rear sight, so I'm kind of looking at it like that. All right, so that was one of the things I wanted to answer in this vlog. That was at the top of my list, basically, to make sure I talked about, and uh, hopefully that's a decent explanation, and I'll refer people to that, uh, to this vlog, you know, let them take a look at that. Uh, the other thing uh, on the, the steel, what we call it, the eating steel or steel eating video we did recently, uh, a lot of people made comments about shooting hollow points in the uh, 762 by 39 rounds. Well, as I said in answering some of those comments, we were not really trying to compare bullets that much. I was mainly trying to, to show folks that haven't shot thick steel with rifle rounds, you know, just what rifle rounds actually do to steel. You know, I could have just easily brought out the 303 British or, or the 8mm Mauser or something, uh, 30 out 6 Coran, and just, just to show you what those rifles do to steel, because they do so much more you know, than a pistol round. Lead bullet, full metal jacket, whatever, pistol rounds do very, very little to, to regular steel. Maybe a little bitty dimple. So we were really just mainly trying to give you a look at what uh, the difference is dramatic, just dramatic because of the velocity and of course the uh, well, it's the velocity, yeah, mainly, yeah, because that 223 round doesn't weigh much, 55 grains, but that extreme velocity and the fact that it is full metal jacket just really drives it into that steel. So that's mainly what we we're trying to show you there. And uh, those were the points I really wanted to make in this vlog. And then just to, again, thank everybody for uh, the support of the channel. We're trying to do a variety of things. We're, we're doing, uh, I know it seems like lately a lot of uh, goofy videos. I don't know. And you're sitting around thinking about it, uh, just these things come to mind and I have a place where I can do that, you know, whether it's shooting pumpkins or, or just whatever. Uh, when you're a little bit crazy, you know, these things kind of come to mind. But they're always done safely, uh, or obviously I wouldn't be doing it. I wouldn't be shooting in any direction that I, I can't do safely. And, oh, I said the magic word, didn't I? Shoot. Oh, empty magazine. Let's see. It's been probably a minute or two, a couple of minutes since I fired a gun. So I'm reaching the, the limit. Again, this is, this is that old World War I war horse replica. Uh, beautiful piece of metal. I feel better now. Uh, once I went, I think, 10 minutes without shooting, when it was a pretty day like this, that was about the most I've ever been able to able to, to keep my hands off of one of these things. But uh, I'm working on it. I'm kind of in a 12-step program, but, you know, I don't always show up. I'm sometimes at the range shooting when they're having their meetings, I don't always make them. <laughs> well, anyway, glad y'all could come out through the woods with us today. Uh, it is a beautiful day. It is really uh, sunny, blue skies, leaves are beginning to turn, and uh, we don't really want to waste too much time over here with the camera. We want to get back to the range and uh, play with some guns. So y'all take care. appreciate your support, and we'll be chatting at you later.